Hello, YouTubes. Welcome back to yet another COVID-19 quarantine edition. Uh, I am one third of the trio of terror. My brother is Vic Springston and Dave at the Weird Kid Channel Show. Uh, we're all kind of doing daily vlogs and stuff for everybody during this whole quarantine stuff to kind of keep the madness out of your guys' eyes and ears, get away from the news, don't even turn the TV off, and just kind of escape for a little bit. Uh, and lately, uh, my brothers in the trio of in terror have been talking a lot about cabinets of curiosities lately. Uh, Dave had built a mummified hand. Uh, Vic has a cabinet. Um, he just built a, uh, a heretic's fork, a torture device to put in his. I really don't have a cabinet um, yet, um, but I will when I get a bigger house. Uh, but I do have a big, pretty good sized taxidermy collection. I do have another video uh, in my videos. If you search my videos, I have one taxidermy term taxidermy tour, mostly of my bugs and stuff. Um, I have a bunch of different things. Uh, now, the cabinets of curiosities kind of started back in Victorian times. There was no TV, and guests would come over to your house. You would show them, hey, I got a shrunken head, I got an, you know, an eel skull, whatever. Just different things that kind of were conversation starters and uh, kind of just brought conversation and entertained people. Um, so they're kind of like catching on again and sort of a big thing. Uh, so for me, I've never showed my skulls yet, so I thought today I'd break out all my big skulls and uh, give you guys a little better look of, uh, of what I have. I want to show you a book first that's really cool that I think everybody should pick up if they can find. I'll try and find a link from Amazon and put it down below. It's a great book. Um, but I think everybody who's collecting skulls, man, you guys got to read this thing. It's awesome. So uh, let's go look at some skulls. I'll bring you guys in closer. All right, this is an awesome book by Simon Winchester. Again, I'll try and find a link from uh, Amazon and put it in the description. Uh, Photography by Nick Mann. This is about one guy's big collection who's a lifelong uh, skull collector. Um, it's a great book. It gives you a lot of information about skulls and certain types. Great photography. And this is mostly one guy's collection. If you guys are remotely interested in taxidermy, this is the book to grab. It goes through monkeys, cats, um, uh, prehistoric fossils. Um, and there's just a wealth of information here. Pigs. I mean, it's a beautiful book. Pronghorns, giraffes, goes through the African animals, African tree. Gives you features about the skulls, why they are the way they are. A bunch of history. Seahorse. I actually have a seahorse. Prehistoric man. I should do the book sh bookshelf uh, tour on this. Okay, parrots and stuff, birds. But just a super cool book. Amphibians, notes on the collection. Okay, there's some pictures of it. But just an awesome book. If you guys can remotely find this on Amazon, man, I highly suggest this thing. But um, for myself, I've had skulls for a while. When I was 16, I bought a pair of shark jaws in Florida for like 15 bucks. And uh, I was just so thrilled and enamored with it. It's like it really never uh, never left me. Um, again, I'm a, I love taxidermy. I don't perform any myself. I'm not a hunter. I don't hunt and kill. Um, and I also don't take animals for trophies. I think it's, you know, for a learning aesthetic, it's great. But for trophies, it's wrong. So one of my first skulls is an Alaskan gray wolf. I've had this for some years. I can't wait to display it. I'm gonna build bases for all these. Like my little monkey, I've got a video uh, for my macaque video where I mounted this little guy. Um, I'm gonna do some kind of base for all these guys and give them you know, a good display because they deserve it. But again, just a beautiful freaking animal. I love how mother nature makes things. All the teeth are intact on this one. They're bleached white already. So this is how I bought it as is. Um, but just a super cool skull. All the turbinates are in there, which are the little fine nose bones. I'm not a fan of people who take those out. I mostly like European mounts or they're beetle cleaned where all the flesh is off. But I like to see all the nose bones and stuff because that's part of the animal. I mean, they shouldn't be stripping all that stuff out. Uh, you know, wolves always have a sagittal crest. That's an easy giveaway. But just a super cool, beautiful skull. I love this thing. This one, like I said, is an Alaskan gray wolf. Um, and I'm going to put him in a nice uh, display one day. I'm going to build a, a nice stand for him somehow. But uh, I really like this one. That's really clean. I think this is a number one skull, if I believe. Usually number one skulls are uh, older animals. They have all their teeth, 
uh, less damage. Um, so they call those number one. So there's different grades of skulls. So if you're looking for like a pristine skull, you want to look for a number one grade. If you over here, this little guy is my macaque monkey. Um, I did do a video on him. Uh, so if you guys look through my videos, you'll see this guy. I went ahead and mounted this guy. He was in a jar forever, and uh, it was just sad. So I wanted to give him a nice, good home to display him. And uh, this guy's from Thailand. He's super cool. I've got him uh, where's his mouth open. Now, when you're displaying a skull, I always use a little bit of silicone. I don't hot glue or put some kind of Gorilla Glue on these because if you wanted to remove the skull and reposition it, you can pick the silicone out and then reposition the skull, and it doesn't hurt anything. But he's got most of his, uh, or he's got all of his teeth, and this is a male because he's got fangs. Um, but he's another cool skull I've had for years that I love. And I'm just happy that I've got him in a dome now and got off my ass and did something to give him a nice display. This guy right here is a little bobcat. I keep him on a little uh, display too. I think he's a number one skull. This guy, I think, is glued shut when I bought him. Yeah, I think he's glued shut. Um, I'm not a fan of it. I like to be able to open them and look at them. And even though I have a bobcat, I also have a lynx. Come here, little lynx. Okay. So the lynx are real similar, as you guys can see. I'm putting them both up to the camera. This is an Alaskan lynx. This is an American bobcat. They're real similar. Um, again, this one's got all its turbinates. He's got all its teeth. And just a super cool, you know, beautiful animal. You think their skulls be bigger, but they're really not. When you put all the meat and bone and sinew on them, uh, then they appear to be bigger in, you know, in, in real life. But uh, I love my lynx. These are super cool. I, I, I just love cat skulls, the way, you know, they're put together. Um, this guy has a pretty good band of oil. All the brown spots are oil. And I'm a fan. I don't mind having, uh, I don't want all my skulls to be super bleached white. This is a living creature at one time. It had body oil, so I don't mind that at all. It doesn't bother me. Um, everybody likes to, a lot of people like the pristine look. I'm not so much a fan. I like the museum look where things look old and they look dated and they look like they were originally. So to me, they just don't look like they're overdone. But that's my uh, Alaskan lynx and that's an American bobcat. I love my cat skulls. Let's see, let's do this guy. This guy is an Alaskan brown bear. This is another number one skull. He's got all his teeth. He is a big boy in life. Pop his little jaw out. Now I've got him rubber band together. I don't have his uh, jaw sections uh, glued up right here. A lot of animals have a split. So you gotta glue their jaws back together. So this guy's, as I bought him, he's already been whitened and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Let me see if I can slide that back. Get the cats back. But uh, like I said, an Alaskan brown bear. Now, bears are kind of uh, iffy, depending on where you get them from. You cannot own a, or you cannot buy a polar bear skull. You cannot buy a Kodiak or a brown bear skull. Um, they're illegal in the United States up until, I think, 1974, 75. Um, it has to be an old specimen that's documented and has numbers on it, if you're going to purchase one. But most companies or most of bears, uh, they're expensive. Polar bear skull will cost you an easy $2,000, um, even for an old... Uh, one from an old collection. But this is another clean one that I love. He's got all his turbinates in there. His lower jaw, he just kind of hinges in that little pocket. Get his jaw back up in there. And that is a, an Alaskan brown bear. Again, he's a number one skull. This is how I bought him. I did not clean him or anything. He, I just keep him in a box out of the sunlight so he doesn't yellow. Get him in there. Okay. But I love, uh, bears are just, bears are awesome. How do you not like a bear? Look at that. I mean, that's just a big meaty skull. I mean, it's got some good weight to it. Super cool. Let's see. This guy, until I can afford a real one one day, this is an actual 1-1 one -one scale of a uh, Smilodon or Sabertooth uh, tiger. This is how big they are in real life. Uh, but obviously it's a cheap plastic skull. I really want to be able to get one from like the La Brea Tar Pits, um, one right out of the freaking oil. Um, but this guy, I mean, for a cat, I mean, that's a big animal. I mean, look at that thing. And then look at this guy compared to a bear. So that was a good size animal.
Now a polar bear skull can easily get like 15, 16 inches long. So it even makes this guy look small. So we got my monkey. Let's look at this guy. Again, I love cats. This is an American cougar. Um, mountain lion, panther, whatever. Again, and she's got all her teeth. This is a large male skull, I believe, if I remember right. Um, I mean, just look at the teeth on that thing. I mean, just freaking beautiful. I mean, what an animal these things are, you know? Again, it's got its turbinates. I'm a fan of like the European mount styles where they clean them out with bugs. And the domestic beetles just go in there and eat all the flesh and then they lighten the skull and this is what you have left. And you can see all the little fine bones and splints, you know, just super cool where the spine went in. That's the underside of the skull. But I, I love this cougar. And guys are, guys are really, uh, it's hard to find cat skulls because guys hoard them. I mean, I love to have a lion and a tiger skull. Um, they're almost identical. The only small differences between lions and tigers are somewhere in their bones, in their nose. Is the only way you can tell the difference between the two skulls if you should happen to find one. Um, but that's my, uh, American mountain lion. Again, just another beautiful skull. I can't wait to display and then make some kind of base for it and, and show this thing in the, really the proper light it needs to be in. I'll just put her here. All right. Now I'm also a fan of shark jaws, although they aren't really bone. This is just dried cartilage. If you were to soak this in water, you could move this around again. Uh, I think these guys are 16, 18 inches across. Uh, the other set of jaws I have is a lot smaller. I think it was just a reef shark. Um, these are actually Mako jaws. You can see the rows of teeth folded back in there. Uh, Makos are the, like the torpedoes of the sea. They're the fastest shark in the ocean. A little chunk of meat back there. But I just love how their teeth are so gnarly and stick out and look all jagged. And I mean, that's a freaking animal. I mean, look at that. I mean, that is a set of jaws. And one day I'm, I'm looking for a set of tiger shark jaws and you couldn't get a set of great white jaws. They would cost you $10,000. A great white tooth is like $300 for a tooth that's that big. So if you're going to collect sharks, they're pricey. But this guy wasn't that bad. I think I gave 50 bucks for this guy on eBay, somewhere around $40, $50. Um, but I love my shark jaws. I mean, there's I definitely want most of the sets of the big ones. Um, so just something else that I'm going to be looking for down the line. And a couple uh, years back on a trip to Florida, I grabbed this guy off the side of the road. I put this in with my Swamp Witch. I don't have a gator skull yet because I want to find a nice big clean one. Most of these gators are farm raised and they're just uh, shot and they're used for leather. Um, but they save the heads and you can buy these on the side of the road at any place, you know, um, tourist trap or whatever. But uh, I thought it was cool. I think I gave 20 bucks for them, something like that. But it looks cool in my Swamp Witch uh, sitting on the table next door. So that's just an American alligator. Pretty cool. I love my skulls and my oddities. And the last thing I have isn't really a skull, but I did show my bugs in an earlier video, so I didn't bring them out today. Um, this is my big old uh, rhinoceros beetle. I mean, he's a big boy. I mean, look how big my hand is. Now, I got a big hand, but I mean, that guy's a monster. I mean, look at that sucker. Kind of hard to see because he's under glass, but that's a lot of bug. I mean, that wingspan is longer than the tip of my fingers to the tip of my thumb. So I do love bugs too. I think they're equally as cool and fascinating. It just, it's amazing what mother nature does and how she builds things and why things are the way they are. So that's why I love taxidermy. So maybe uh, I think I have a couple more pieces I haven't showed yet. I haven't dug those out, but uh, that's most of my skulls. Um, I kind of hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys have a cabinet of curiosity that you're building, hey, tell me in the comments. Tell me what skulls you have. Tell me what skulls you'd like to have. I mean, this is just most of my bigger ones, uh, and it's kind of said that they're all in boxes and not displayed right, so uh, I'm getting there. I want to get a nice cabinet when I get a bigger house, and I want to set all my stuff up nice and display it the way it should be. All right, folks, that is it. That is my uh, taxidermy update special. Um, if you want to find my other one, it's in the uh, video somewhere below. Uh, it's most of my bugs and a crab and my seahorse and my other smaller ones. My spiders. I got a lot of spiders. I love spiders, too. Um, but these are all my big skulls from my big guys. Um, and then my one uh, rhinoceros beetle. So, hey. I'm uh, kind of...
kind of an avid collector. I'm always kind of looking it on the creep and going to all the creep shows are getting big now. So that's usually the best place to find stuff if you can't find it on eBay or just Google what you're looking for. Um, but again, like I said, taxidermy, I'm not a fan of killing animals for trophies. I think they're all learning instruments. I mean, they're beautiful to look at and see what Mother Nature builds and how she puts things together and why things are the way they are. So, man, you guys, that's my taxidermy tour. That's my update for all my, uh, my big skulls. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, go watch my brothers in the trio of terror, Vic Springston. Um, go watch the Weird Kids show. Uh, we're doing daily vlogs to kind of keep you guys busy and distracted from all the nonsense and the craziness in the world. So, hey, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave me a like, and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching.